Hello YouTube, this is Tyrell Mares again with another video. Today I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about burn areas and recovery for them. Here we are in Wetmore, Colorado, actually just outside of Wetmore, Colorado. And the about a year and a half ago a fire came through and burnt everything. And there's a lot of green here. There's a lot of green here that's still standing. And, um, but the thing is, a lot of trees were hit with the fire when the fire happened. And so, what at this particular site, what happened is that a crew of loggers came through and took out everything um, that was burned for the most part. A lot of it now. Um, there's some still remaining, but the thing is, is after a, fi a fire, one thing that is ideal is salvage cutting. And salvage cutting is pretty much salvaging the usable timber products off the landscape because removing dead, burnt snags actually help with the regeneration process. It, ta um, it allows for other plants and species to regenerate themselves as you can see with this grass now i would like to also mention that during you know fire rehabilitation one thing that you have to really pay attention to is soils these the most of the ground cover here besides these trees um, that haven't been taken or anything is grass and it looks like a lot of it is um you know, just different things like wheatgrass and, uh, you know, you got some uh, forbs uh, such as, um, what is this? Uh, I think it's winter fat. Yeah, that's winter fat. Um, you know, so you have to be, be really mindful of the whole um, rehabilitation process because, as you can see, this, this uh, soil is pretty loose there. And... Uh, and with the the idea behind best management practices is to uh, ensure water and soil quality, uh, protect so, uh, soils and protect water uh, watersheds. So I would just kind of like to mention that to you guys as well. Um, but as you can see, there are still a number of uh, dead trees still um, around. A lot of a number of dead trees, and all as well as slash. You know, there's plenty of slash in the area. Um, another thing I'd also like to point out, too, is that some of these trees are um, how did survive the fire. And in a ponderosa pine forest like this one, typically um, under natural historic fire regimes, fires came through and burnt the understory, similar to kind of like this. And uh, this structure is very similar to at least in this general area where i'm at is kind of similar to where what it's more or less supposed to look like you know you want to have a park-like theme and with a park-like theme you want to have you know meadows like this and then fall you know and you have like oh fairly open stands kind of like by like this you know i mean this isn't the most ideal but you know um because these trees aren't uh exactly mature uh these pines right here in this general area are considered what's to be second growth this guy on the other hand is a con is considered to be a mature ponderosa pine and um ideally in a ponderosa pine forest there years a lot more of these guys than these little dudes so that's just another thing uh, to keep in mind. I kind of want to just make this video just kind of, um, just kind of just to help people understand, you know, the importance of timber harvesting on, po uh, you know, uh, post fire areas, uh, because a lot of people don't realize it either. But um, when you, when a fire comes through. Um, obviously it's going to burn everything and a lot of people don't know this either, but fires, uh, fire scars are actually more susceptible in the first couple years, um, of a fire.
uh, just simply because of all the regeneration to, um, that uh, happens. And typically a lot of t uh, timber is not removed within the first couple of years. And if it is, and if, and uh, a lot of trees because of uh, burned out roots and stuff, they'll fall over and everything like that. And a lot of, and a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that just because a lot of trees fall over, there's a lot of blow down, it doesn't change the fuel loading. It just changed the displacement. So, so hotter, um, so you might have hotter, um, higher intensity fires away from the canopy but not on the ground and that's a problem because hot fires near the ground actually make the soils hydrophobic they won't soak up water and they'll actually just uh just uh allow water to run off them another thing with fire uh hot high intensity fire is that they'll uh remove that the fire removes uh essential nutrients is and is actually more harmful does more harmful more harm than good because it puts an excess amount of nitrogen and uh, uh nitrogen and um carbon into the soil and so that's kind of um not really beneficial for um the first regeneration species such as grass and uh forbs and stuff such like that um, but other than that, I just kind of want to just go over that to you guys today and just kind of mention it to you guys. Uh, earlier, I discussed that I was doing a project for a landowner, and this is kind of what I uh, have come out with. There was a lot of dead and down uh, from the fire and stuff like that. Um, cause this is a former, this is a burn area or it burned, uh, October, 2012, but this is kind of what I've been doing. And, uh, so it's been keeping me pretty busy and everything, but turned out pretty good and everything like that. And I mean, this is just the, the main concentration in here, you know, there's some stuff down the draw you can see. and then obviously didn't cut any green I just kind of cut the dead so that you know everything's good and they had a bunch of loggers that came through here previously so I don't know so I just tried to clean up and use what I could use and everything and some of that just gonna stay in that tree right there that's no bueno because he's already on a lean he's got bad checking with him and he's right next to a tree and he could slam into that other tree no matter how much you try to compensate I mean the only way to get that dude out is probably with a uh, block and tackle so it can guide the fall of the tree but truth is is that I'm not just gonna mess with it I'm just leaving it for a habitat tree or whatever but yeah a lot of the uh, just different stuff mm, butt end yeah I just you know try to put some stuff here to help the grass grow and kind of prevent this loose soil because you see how it's packing in with these sticks and stuff right here where the bare soil is more brush pile and just right there in the draw so I could put it oh and this guy that guy's pretty gnarly I left him too for a while left tree because he's got that nasty crook in him and I mean, if you really know what the hell you're doing, then I say go for it. But fact is, is that that, oh, that is a little out of my uh, comfort zone. Especially counting that you kind of can't really see it in the camera, or at least I can. You know, you got a lot of holes and stuff from woodpeckers and it's starting to expose bear bark and there's some signs of checking so 
not good on that and it's just something I don't want to really try to mess with. So I, I left that guy for a, a wildlife tree. And I cleaned that up a little bit. I kind of left that brush because critters and stuff like that. And not trying to take everything off the slope. You know, I want to try to at least leave some stuff so where the soil can stabilize and stuff and everything like that. But yeah, then, uh, yeah, there's some more brush. But yeah, but yeah, this is pretty much what I've done so far. It's what I did for my project for the past several months. Doesn't look like a whole lot, but tell you what, it kept me pretty busy. I mean, I go to school full time too. So, I don't, um, so yeah, I don't have the time to always come out here and stuff, but it's, well, that's kind of what I've, I've been doing, and, uh, yeah, but, uh, thanks for watching this, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.